child. Anyway. What what what's up everybody? Let me try to I know I'm backlit. That oop, that'll work. What's up everybody? So I'm out here with uh can y'all see her? Not quite probably now you can. Iris the farm dog. Um we sitting on the porch for a little bit. I just got through watering. Um and I just want to do uh a video or two. Y'all, man, when you don't have no winter, these mosquitoes, man. I mean, I'm I'm here to tell y'all, these mosquitoes, these mosquitoes is on steroids, and they drink protein shakes, and they lift weights. I ain't never seen no mosquitoes like this. This video isn't about mosquitoes, but I'm just saying. I have to come out here long sleeves and pants. And it's, I mean, it's morning. But y'all, it's still, you know, it be, it be 80 something. And even during the day, I find when I try to do work and things, I just have to have long sleeves. I just, that's the only really way I can really keep them off of me. And I just have to sweat half the death. But anyhow, that's a minute and 40 seconds of foolishness. So, um, can you hold that pen down? I, that might be coming through on the video. You ain't done it, but standing there, I can't understand why you're panting. I swear these animals, you think they had jobs. Lord knows they don't work for their food. They're going to have to do some food commercials, dog food commercials. Uh attack com muzzle commercials you have to do something because you all eat too much and you don't have an income and you need to be able to pay your rent you understand what I'm saying to you rent you know what that is okay she doesn't know what rent is but anyway um I sit sit that's part of your problem you got ADHD you won't sit down sit Thank you, my love. Now, see how much more relaxed. See, then you, then you don't have to pick. And she's panting louder. Can you all hear her? Oh, don't lick, don't kiss me now. Don't look up into the camera now. Sit down. ADHD. So, anyway, y'all see the title of the video. Let me go and get into it. Okay, so. If you're not familiar with my channel, I grow in tires. If you are familiar with my channel, then you know that I grow in tires. So, um, oftentimes, I will get, well, not often, it's only been a couple of times, but I will see it more so on other people's channels. Um, people asking about the toxicity of the tires and is it safe to grow in tires and this, this, that, and other. So, let me first start off by saying um, that is a very valid question. It's a very, um, reasonable question because anybody that knows anything about anything that's made the way the tires are made you know that there's some chemical processes in, in play yes rubber comes from a plant comes from a rubber tree but it's not like they take the rubber cut it off the tree and form it into a tire that's not exactly how that work works tires have um, UV inhibitors to protect them from the sun and they have various chemical makeups that um, for instance your tires some tires are more grippy than others that has to do with the chemical formula that they use along with the rubber um, some tires have different speed ratings and different durabilities and can take different weights for instance 18 wheeler tire is going to be um, much more heavy duty than say a tire for um, a small car or bicycle so all of that has to do with how they take the chemical processes and manipulate the tire and they use chemistry to come up with all of this stuff. So that being said, we all know that there are going to be some chemicals in there that are not intended for human or animal consumption. So people always ask me, um, when you grow in the tires, uh, 
is it is it safe for edibles? Um, you know, if you're going to eat the stuff you're growing, we're not talking about just like flowers and stuff that you're going to look at. Naturally, that stuff isn't really going to matter that much. But the things that you consume, you don't want to be unknowingly consuming uh, chemicals that probably cause cancer. I, mean, I ain't going to lie. I ain't no telling them, you know, what all chemicals they use in tires, but I'm almost positive. If ingested for a long enough time, they would cause some probably serious health issues. So, the question, uh, and, and there's conflicting information on the internet um, as far as this because I won't lie, you got some people that like to do the fear thing and they like to harbor fear in people that they are around and things of that nature. Um, and they will tell you, oh, yeah, if you grow in tires, you're going to die. Um, everything you grow in them is going to be extremely uh, laced with chemicals etc cetera, etc cetera. and then you also have those that um, say no so here is my take on this and and a little bit of history about this I've been growing in these tires for going on five years now um, and I know some people are gonna say oh well, that's that's not that long however keep in mind I didn't just like race out and go get tires and that was that no I talked to some people I, I researched quite a bit before I made the decision to grow in what I'm growing in um, and my health and safety as well as price were my main uh, factors that I base things on. So when I got ready to do this I, I actually ended up talking to somebody who had been growing in tires for about um, it was an older lady. I think she said she had been growing in tires for 20 years. 20 or 25, I can't remember. And um, the lady's very healthy. She's an older lady, but you you wouldn't be able to guess her age if you saw her. But she's been growing in those tires for, like I said, 20, 25 years. She still grows in them now. Um, she has She never did any scientific research, even looked into anything. She pretty much was like, it was tires all up and down the road, you know, they were free, I could just grab them, and she started growing in them, but um, she's never had any health issues, anything like that, and I know it's not a scientific, you know, thing, but I'm just saying, that weighed into part of my um, concerns, because my thing is, she she's not the only person that eats what she grows. She has a family, and many of her family members eat, but she and they've been eating the stuff for 20 years. So my thinking is, if you have that amount of people eating out of this stuff that she's been growing in for 20, 25 years, you'd think by now you'd have some type of serious illness come up. She doesn't have any members, family members with cancer, uh, no family members with really any health issues. Um, she got some overweight family members, but even they don't have they don't have high blood pressure, they don't have diabetes, none of that. But um. But yeah, so that weighed into part of my consideration. The other part was when I really researched the way tires actually work. Yes, tires do release um, certain chemicals, but when they release those chemicals, it's actually when they're being used on a car. What causes those chemicals to be released in the tire is the weight of the vehicle and the speed at which it's traveling. So if you think of those chemicals being locked into the pores of the rubber, the pressure of the weight of your vehicle, which is very heavy, plus the centrifugal momentum of the tire spinning causes those chemicals to come out of that. And it doesn't sling out where it's noticeable, but it comes out, it leaches out very slowly. What are those chemicals for? Like I said, they're UV inhibitors to protect your tires against the sun um, and things of that nature. Now, when you think about a tire, what do most tires do before you get them? Sit on a shelf. They sit on a shelf in the store. Now, you don't want all of your UV inhibiting chemicals and those other chemicals that do the other things like help with grip and all this kind of stuff. You don't want those chemicals to leak out while it's on a shelf. So basically, the way the chemistry works is they've made tires to where they are chemically stable on the shelf so that they are preserved. That way when they get on your car, they actually work how they're supposed to. Think about it. If all the UV inhibitors leak out of your tires and all the stuff that helps with grip, 
and durability and all if all that stuff leaks out of your tire on the shelf, you go to put it on your car. That tire's not gonna last very long on your car. Um it's pretty much going to have a very short life and and tire manufacturers don't want that because it won't be long before people be like, oh yeah, don't buy them tires because they don't last. They don't do what they say they're going to do, etc., etc. So when tires are actually just sitting, they were actually designed to be pretty much shelf stable. Now I know what you're going to say. Well, they're sh sitting on a shelf and they don't have soil in them and they're not constantly getting wet. That's true. That's very true. Um, but I also want you to think about something. I want you to think about this as well. If you have a, a, a tire on a car that you don't you don't drive very often or, or you don't drive for a very long time, um, what usually happens to that tire? It dry rots. And the dry rotting is caused by, like I said, the chemicals not leaching out of the tire. They just basically sit there and sit there and sit there and they don't do their job and they become inert. Um, and that tire just dry rots and it becomes very brittle and very fragile and that tire is exposed to the elements it's exposed to water unless you have this car in a garage or something like that or some you know enclosed space that maybe it won't get rained on but I'm talking about a car you probably just got sitting somewhere and it's not in a garage or, in, or wherever um, it's exposed to water, it's exposed to light, it's exposed to all the conditions that mine are exposed to ex for the, the only factor is it's not, um, it doesn't have any uh, soil in it. And, um, yeah, you'll notice that they just pretty much, they dry rot when they're not um, being used. It's because the chemicals aren't protecting the rubber. The rubber is behaving how rubber, like if you take rubber off a rubber tree and you just lay it out, it takes a while, but it will break down over time. The tires actually go back to behaving like regular rubber would behave. Um, also, if you look at maybe maybe if you've ever seen tires like when they're thrown out at a dump or wherever they're just thrown out, um, if you were to take those areas, for instance, the dump's got plenty of tires, <laughs> but um, if you were to take those those areas where those tires were thrown out and they're just left out there, you see how long it takes them to actually break down and um, for them to actually you know just become totally back to nothing because I have a tire in my yard that somebody planted a tree in and that tree's got to be I don't know how old that tree is um, it's actually a holly and if anybody knows anything about hollies hollies are usually bushes as a matter of fact I'm gonna show that to y'all in another video y'all stay posted I'm gonna show you I've never seen a holly like this before. It's an actual tree. It's not a bush. Like they, they trimmed it in such a way and kept it limbed up to where it grew into a tree form. And anybody who's ever seen, I've actually had an arborist, that the guy that cut down my trees, he came and he was like, is that a holly? I was like, yeah. He was like, I've never seen one that big in my entire life and I've been cutting down trees and doing arborist work for 35 years. I was like, really? He was like, no, I've never seen one like that ever. He was like, that's got to be 70 years old. That's what he said. I'm not going to cut it down to find out. But needless to say, when they planted that, it had a tire around it. That tire is still there. And I tried to pull it out of the ground, and it it's not breaking down for nothing. So I'm saying that to say that um, even the chemicals that are in them, if they're leaching out, they must be leaching out at a very, very slow rate. And why do I say that? I have had my soil tested. Um, my soil does not have anything abnormal in the soil. Um, everything in there is what's normally supposed to be in there. There are no compounds in it that, um, okay, wasp. Well, there are no compounds in it that um, are abnormal or toxic or anything like that in my soil. And I do have, I, I, I do a test every year. Um, and maybe the next time I do my test, I'll show you guys. Um, I'll be honest, usually when I, when I do that test, I just, 
I, I do it and send it off and get the results back and I totally forget all about it. But um, but yeah, so I've been doing that test annually for five years and my soil has more or less not changed. Um, I mean, I have certain levels of certain little stuff that goes up and down, which is normal, such as uh, sometimes that phosphorus, you know, might go up a little, might go down a little, not a lot, not wild swings, you have, you know, little, the pH may change very slightly, but I don't have anything, um, hey, be quiet, do me a favor and sit down, hey, sit, 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 thank you, stay, hey, stay seated, stop. She sees somebody walking down the street that she don't recognize. Good girl. Now she's all right. You know, woo, power breeds. Anyway, um, every now and again she gets in that protective mode, but she's all right. Yeah, you bro. You see, all right. He's okay. Yeah, he's okay. Um, but yeah, so that's my to toxicity talk. So, um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Um, me personally, I think tires are a great thing to grow in. Um, I know everybody's not going to grow in them. And you, and your whole garden doesn't have to be tires. Um, it really doesn't. Um, like I said, mine just happened to be that way because when I started, I had just bought this house and I was spending more money on the house. I wanted to garden, but I didn't want to spend a lot of money on the garden. Yes, baby love. Why are you doing all this breathing? I'm sure my video is going to be full of dog breathing. Any dogs listening to this probably think it's like, I don't know, Animal Planet or something. But, um, but yeah, I personally think they're a great way to grow. And, and don't think that you have to just leave them like mine. Like, if you look, you can find where people have cut them and made their tires look like flowers and they painted them and it's really pretty and it's really decorative. I didn't go through all that. Um, and maybe one day I will with, you know, maybe a few or whatever. But y'all check out some of that stuff. Um, you know, go look at some pictures or some videos of people that have, like, really did some decorative things with their tires. And it's really fun with kids. And, you know, I think tires are a great way to go. They last freaking forever. Um. In the winter time, they actually insulate my plants so that my roots don't freeze. So if you're trying to overwinter peppers and things of that nature, it actually works really well for that. Um, people in the summer, they worry about the heat. Now this is just me. Now I do live in hot climate of 8A. So, um, but any time that I reach down in there and feel the soil, it's actually pretty cool. I ain't going to lie, them tires be burning up. Like in the middle of the day, you come out here and you touch them. It just, I mean, it depends on how hot it is that day, and if they're in direct sun, um, they can kind of scald you. If you got little little babies, um, just kind of be careful. You don't want them to fall on them, and you know, maybe get a little, uh, you know, a little hot. You don't want to cook your babies, so be careful of that. But um, or if you have maybe. Pets usually are pretty smart, but if you got a stupid pet, you know, everybody's, I've, I've had stupid pets. You just be like, you just stupid. If you got a stupid pet, you know, once again, they do get hot if they're in direct sunlight. Now, the ones I have in the shade, they never, they never, you can always touch them. They're always fairly cool to the touch. But if they are in direct sunlight um, for a while, they will heat up. But I never noticed that the actual soil heats up. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why, but the soil actually stays pretty cool. Another thing is rubber doesn't breathe, so when you water, your water is less likely to evaporate. For instance, if you put your plants in, put some mulch over the top, when you water, I can almost guarantee, especially if you have a, a, a soil meter, like this, like I got a lot of organic matter in mine, like mine does, um, it will hold water for you nicely, and all your water won't evaporate. Now, if you don't have mulch on the top, you asking for it to evaporate. Um, if you haven't seen Homestead Heart, how she did her melon patch, I think her melon patch was absolutely the perfect way um, to do that. Um, 
because that way she knew where she had planted her melons, where all of her vines originated from. She knew where to water, but it was easy for the melons to grow out and, and in between. I realize everybody doesn't have that amount of space, but even if you didn't have that amount of space, if you just did two tires, and because you, you can plant quite a few melons in one tire, you don't have to plant just one melon in one tire. So, um, so yeah. That was, um, so yeah, there's a lot of interesting ways that you can use tires in your garden. Don't be afraid to use them. Um, don't be afraid of the toxicity levels. Um, I personally have not experienced any health issues. Others that I've talked to, I mentioned a lady in person. I did talk to some people on the internet, but I didn't mention them because sometimes, you know, it's the internet. You don't know these people. I assume they're telling me the truth, but I don't just, I'm not going to put this out here like it's gospel. Like, I know for a fact they were telling me the truth versus when you know somebody face to face and you see what they're doing and um, you can pretty much bank on it, they tell you the truth because you see it with your own eyes. Um, so, yeah, I did talk to it. And then, you know, like I said, uh, research and studying how tires work, how they're made and things of that nature. So, um, but as always, you don't always have to believe me. You are going to find conflicting things that go against what I'm saying but that's anything in life um, like I tell people all the time always be leery about the credibility of where some information comes from because sometimes you can trace information back and find out that they actually have a monetary gain for what they're saying you know um, it's just like people who are against the um, certain food industries Let's say, let's say eggs. People who are against the egg industry for years and years, they tell me eggs is horrible for you. Even the government was telling me this. And I knew they was lying. There's more good cholesterol in eggs than bad cholesterol. They was telling you eggs is going to raise your cholesterol. That be, that's because there was a monetary reason for those people to say that. Those people were in another part of the food industry. And they wanted you to buy their products instead of eggs because eggs was in direct competition with them. Um... And, and don't think that the FDA can't be paid because the FDA is on people payroll that shouldn't be on. They they collect money from people who they shouldn't be getting money from. And it's actually a huge conflict of interest. But I won't get into that because that's a whole nother, you know. But you girl read, you know. <laughs> so, you know, well, um, but yes, 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 um, tires. They make great planters and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, I, you know, like I said, if you got any questions in the comment section, if you got any questions about where to find them, if you're having trouble finding them, maybe I can help you with that. Or maybe if you put it in the comment section, somebody else in your area might see it and help you find help you find. It. So, um, yeah, but this video is long enough. So I want to say thank you guys for watching. I truly appreciate it. And, um, until next time, see you guys later.